Chairman Paul Schaefer, you've had a front row seat. How are you feeling today? Uh, of course, nostalgic. Yeah. And I've gone through uh, the kind of uh, phases that one goes through when one is bereft. But I have come around to a very zen and, and a good calm place, yeah. place of gratitude. Yeah. What else can one say? 33 years with the smartest, mm. hippest, quickest uh, man in show business. Uh, with all due respect to you guys, you <laughs> yes. know, you're right up <laughs> yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but to work with David totally spontaneously every night. So what? when he first told you, how did he tell you when he first told you? What did you think? It was nutty. Uh, we were just about to go out and do our warm-up, you know. The band is playing. Uh, I'm about to go out. Then Dave comes out just to say hello to the audience before we roll the tape. He said, just come in. Come here for a second. And we went in kind of an, an alcove, that backstage of that old Ed Sullivan Theater. He said, I told, I told him I'm retiring. Call yeah. today. Really? And then but the next thing you know, it's, well, East Coast girls are saying, what did I just hear? Yeah. You know, I, everything felt different. Paul, uh, was it, moment. as he said, mm -hmm. the best hour of the day? Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course it was. Uh, everything was in preparation for that. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun every day. And he kept it so real and so loose and so spontaneous that it was different every day and I never knew what he was going to do. He recently called you a musical genius. Well, he exaggerates, of course. No, he doesn't. Uh, but it, he has been so supportive of me. He has heard every single note mm -hmm. that I and my band have heard over all these 33 years. You don't think that he's listening, but he, you know, play anything untoward and he's right there. Paul, what was that? But you the know, relationship and, between and the talent. two of you, Paul, is really something special. Were you guys friends before this show? You played no, I, so well off of each other. I hadn't met him. I knew, of course, who he was, and I had seen his morning show, which I loved. And I just got a call from his management, come in and have a meeting with him hmm. regarding the show. We hit it off. He claims that he never had anyone else in mind. Uh, he said that he had seen some of my stuff on Saturday Night Live. I had done the first five years as pianist and writer and on camera occasionally. And uh, he has just been the most incredible boss, mm -hmm. saying to me, if you have anything, I don't care if it's in the monologue, I don't care if it's I'm interviewing Julie Roberts, jump in at any time. Who, who has an open mic for yeah. 33 yeah. years? Yeah. I had that. Yeah, what can cool. one say? That's terrific. Is there a moment? Is there one moment that you remember more than anything else? Well, I think everybody remembers, in the midst of all of the comedy, the groundbreaking comedy, I think everybody remembers the serious moments. Yeah. Uh, who will ever forget uh, that he was the first man in late night to go back on the air with a comedy show after the 9-11 attack. Yeah. Everyone was looking mm -hmm. towards him to see how to do it. And when he did it, he made it okay for everyone to come back. And then, of course, that Warren Zevon, that last Warren Zevon mm -hmm. show, mm -hmm. which he gave to Warren in its entirety and interviewed him, and Warren said, you got to enjoy every sandwich and then play three songs. Mm. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, nope. Do you think he has any regrets? Uh, he has been very honest and verbal on the air about saying this. Why did I say this? <laughs> this is the worst mistake <laughs> I ever made. <laughs> <laughs> nope. uh, you know, he, he has been a perfectionist all these years. Yeah. That's how he kept up that amazing level of perfection on that show. He never threw away a single show. He never walked through a single show. And so, uh, although he will always beat him up for it, then why did I say that to Madonna? You know, no, 25 years no. ago. He still, not, on a very real level, I don't, I don't see why he would. But Paul, he has said that, and jokingly, that he's going to turn to a life of crime. Yeah. What, what do you plan to do? I'm wondering, is your wife, Kathy, thinking, oh, gosh, Paul's going to be sitting around oh, the house? Oh, no, Kathy will never. She doesn't want me around the house. She is <laughs> very, uh, very strict about that. you got to keep working. Yeah, have, yeah. You, have you thought about your next chapter? What are you thinking? Uh, I'm just going to, you know, keep on playing the piano. Mm -hmm. I think somebody will let me. I love to do all the different things that I... I mean, David let me do comedy, got, yeah. Let, me, yeah. let me improvise. Act, you know, I, I, I want to do all of those things, continue to do all those things. Maybe a lovely uh, three-episode uh, uh, arc on uh, CSI Miami. Yeah, you know? yeah. 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 I'm open That's for true. anything. Was there a musical guest that got away that over the years you said, I wish we would have had fill in the blank? Was there anybody like that for you? No, you know, only uh, we, we missed Elvis and we missed oh. Sinatra. But otherwise, uh, we did pretty you well. Did pretty much had everything. And there will be some surprises next week? 
Uh, yes, yeah, surprises, but I think also, you know, things that everybody wants to see Good. and would expect. Thank you, Paul Schaefer. Good yeah. luck. Yeah. Thank Congratulations. You. Congratulations. Thank you for having me, all of you. The guests for the last episode of The Late Show include Oprah Tonight, then Tom Hanks, Eddie Vedder, Monday, Bill Murray, Tuesday, Big Surprises for Wednesday's finale, all starting tonight at 1135, 1035 Central, only on CBS.